What's up guys, Bajiri here. So we're in. Shadowlands Alpha is here and we had a ton of fun playing it on stream yesterday, which was the first day that it was available. And right now I would like to make a quick overview video of Arms and Fury. I don't really play a whole lot of Prot, so I haven't gone over Prot and played it yet, but I definitely can show you guys a little bit about Arms and Fury if you guys wanna check that out. But we'll start off with Arms because this is a, uh, a spec that I think probably benefits the most from what they've done. So if you guys saw the class changes video, the class updates video, basically what the idea is for the alpha right now, I'm not sure if this is like the, the long-term plan, but they've basically taken a lot of what the class is in BFA, left it mostly alone, and then added a bunch of utility stuff to it is kind of basically the way that I'm interpreting what's going on right now. But once again, this is alpha. This is the very first build. It is very likely, almost certain, that things will change between now and the, you know, launch of the game, right? Probably even to, even between now and beta. So don't get too hung up on the way the class is fully fleshed out right now, because it's probably not fully fleshed out right now. But what we can do is take a look at what's going on to get an idea of where they want to go with it. So I think... A reasonable place to start is probably the talents so that you guys can see what the talent tree looks like and understand like if if an ability isn't on my bars or it's not in the spell book you can understand why okay so not a lot has changed with the talent tree as you can see um, one of the things that we can do is kind of make this a quicker video by glossing over some of the things that haven't changed like all of this right none of these things have changed war machine skull splitter Sudden Death, all that's the same. Stormbolt, unfortunately, this is still a talent tier, so I definitely would like to figure out what we can do to make this talent tier not this anymore, right? Double time would be great. Any of these things, if not all of these things, would be fantastic to have a baseline, basically. I don't think I don't think Warrior should just ha not have to... Or I don't think Warrior should have to talent into a stun, right? I don't think Warrior should have to talent into something like double time without having some sort of stronger bonus... Um, or like some sort of aspect to having like charge stun back, right? There's like, there's like a, there's a couple things that should be considered as baseline. And as we go, we'll get there. Uh, Massacre, Fervor, Rend, all those things are still talents. They really haven't changed much. Um, well, one thing that has changed, you guys can notice that the numbers are smaller, right? If you, if, if Shadowlands stat squish and level squish is coming as a surprise to you, that's why we're level 53, right? Level 120, it comes down to level 50. You're still just as strong against the world as you would be at 120. It's just the numbers are smaller. But I like that a lot. It looks really nice on stream to hit things for, you know, a thousand is a big hit instead of it being, you know, a million next expansion, right? So second wind is the same. People are like, whoa, second wind. But no, it's it's the same thing as it was before. I'm just playing it because it's nice for leveling. As long as you survive a, a fight, you're going to heal up to full afterwards. Or you can kite in the fight and heal up during the fight if you want to. But Bounding Stride, Defensive Stance, all of that is the same. Um, collateral Damage is the same. Warbreaker is the same. Cleave is different, I, arguably worse. Um, you have to hit uh, three targets with a Whirlwind in order to use Cleave. So that's kind of funky. You can't just Cleave outright, and it strikes up to five enemies, so it's also AoE capped. Kind of a kind of a weird spell to have. I'd rather just, just, this just be gone, honestly. Just take it away. If it's nerfed like that, just just, just take it away. <laughs> maybe it's good. 954 damage is actually kind of a lot, I should say. So maybe maybe it's not as bad as it as it looks, but it still requires another extra step to whirlwind first, then cleave. But 954 damage in AOE is actually not that bad. So maybe I should just quit whining. Um, in for the kills, same. Avatar's the same. Deadly Calm is different though. Deadly Calm reduces the rage cost of your next four abilities, offensive abilities, not defensive abilities. That we'll talk about in a moment. Um, for example, it does not affect, at this point, ignore pain, but it probably should. Um, but your maximum rage is also increased by 30, so I was actually leveling with this. I'm just having fun with it. The max level in the alpha right now is level 53. You basically clear out a lot of the starting zones, leading into the first dungeon, which is right here. 
Um, I haven't completed the dungeon yet because I <laughs> had a really fun but really buggy run of it. So we didn't quite get it done. It was like, it was uh, <laughs> impassably bugged at the end of it, but that's okay. Uh, but Deadly Calm is kind of an interesting talent choice for leveling around, and it could be interesting in general for, as like a defensive option if you're trying to really make the most use of Ignore Pain. So it's kind of like a soft, like a soft synergy with that. Uh, anger Management is the same. Dreadnought is different. So Aura Power has two charges, which it did before, but it also incorporates the Seismic Wave like uh, traits, the Azerite trait. Out of all the Azerite traits that Warriors had, I think it's kind of interesting that they decided to incorporate uh, Seismic Wave, which I didn't think was a very popular one, but it was kind of fun. I was using it to level. It felt pretty good to have two charges of overpower. It's just fun. And the Seismic Waves are nice for AoE clear, I guess, so. You know, at this point in the alpha, you know, it's just kind of a, a time to play around with builds, even if it's not optimal. And I don't think Dreadnought's quite optimal, but it was it was fun. Especially when you have such low haste and you don't really generate that much rage, right? So, like, going nuts with spamming rage with Anger Management just really didn't really work out very well. But Dreadnought does. One of the things that's insane, and I hope that this is intentional, Ravager, dude. Ravager is back. So Ravager does exactly the same thing as it did before, except that it does damage to up to eight enemies, so the AoE cap is a thing. I need, I need to read like what they were thinking with the AoE cap. Um, but can you can you notice one small element of this tooltip that it does not have that it used to? Ravager does not replace Bladestorm. So you can Ravager and Bladestorm at the same time, which is insane. So I was having a lot of fun with that in uh, in dungeons, just doing massive AoE. So like, AoE is capped, but you have access to Ravager and Bladestorm, which I think is really cool. Um, some of the things that are, there's nothing really different about uh, Honor Talents. One thing that's funny is that Spell Reflection is still an Honor Talent but it, it raises your shield reflecting all spells cast on you last three seconds. But it's different than the baseline spell reflect that we have. I think this just buffs base, uh, spell reflect. So take this in, take this in, understand that this is the same, but this, this also reduces the cooldown of Ravager, but it, it should reduce the cooldown of Bladestorm as well. But I think that it's still confused. So some of these things like are not fully fleshed out yet, right? So either Ravager should still replace Bladestorm, or Storm of Destruction should both reduce the cooldown of Bladestorm and Ravager. So, and apply Mortal Wounds, which would be pretty fun. Uh, so, like I said, some of these little things are like, ah, like it's not fully fleshed out, right? And we can give you some more examples of that as we open up our spellbook. So you'll notice that we have a bunch of abilities and just a Warrior thing. Because I don't know if it was like this before. Do, do we have Warrior and Arms, or was it just like all the way the same way? Either way. We, when we open up our spellbook, we'll notice that we all we still have battle shot, which I think it, it was. Is it only is it ten percent on modern WoW and BFA? Because it's only five percent now. We have heroic throw, we have Zerker rage, we have ignore pain, guys. Ignore pain for arms is so so nice. I don't know how it feels that when we're doing like PvP and stuff, but it costs forty rage, which is you know a big rage spender. Uh, it's on a twelve second cooldown, which is a pretty short cooldown. But it it ignores 50% of the damage taken, and then up to a certain amount of damage prevented, basically. So this is huge. It's about a fifth of your health. I, I guess as it scales up, it's like a, it's a little bit less than a fifth of your health, but still, it it feels really nice on a 12 second cooldown. So it's like a very very short, almost rotational defensive addition to the warrior toolkit, arms warrior toolkit. For Fury, this costs 80 rage, but that's because like none of a Fury's abilities cost rage except for Rampage. So I feel like it, it feels like almost like a little worse for Fury. But for Arms, it feels real, real nice. Especially if you have the Deadly Calm talent and you're playing Dre Dreadnought. Because where you know, a lot of things are free. And Dreadnought gives you two overpowers, which are free. So you have more rage to spend on things like Ignore Pain. So once again, I haven't tested any of this out in PvP. But Ignore Pain is, is a really nice thing, right? Because a lot of us have asked for Arms Warrior to have some sort of self-healing. But if they want to really double down on Arms Warrior not having a self-heal, whereas Fury and Prot are kind of the ones that can heal themselves, Fury heals a ton. Um, arms mitigating damage is pretty cool, right? Because that was the power of Arms. You have you have defensive stance. You have die by the sword. These things that are just a damage reduction uh, that are on that are big cooldowns, though. Uh, well, not like, these things is a big cooldown, but it's just part of what makes Arms Warrior viable, right? Not as much healing, but a little bit more just inert tankiness, innate tankiness with... Uh, damage reduction. Now you have Ignore Pain, which is another damage mitigation thing. 
which is awesome. So this actually works out really well. And for me, I, I can see sort of how it fits the fantasy too, but very, very cool addition. So I've charge. Also, another one that I'm super excited about is intervene. Uh, this I'd actually like to see this as an honor talent too, where you can you can honor talent into safeguard, where it breaks roots and sh and uh, reduces damage on your teammates. That'd be amazing. But I'm super glad to have intervene back. We talked about this a lot. We still have fear, execute, hamstring. Hamstring is still on global. Um, but when we talk about piercing howl, spoiler, that's pretty exciting too. So we have pummel, heroic leap is the same, rallying cry is the same, except. Uh, we do get a, another tier of Rallying Cry uh, at level 56, where it gives you a little bit more HP. So it'll it'll add 20% HP, and then you have the talent that can also they can add even more. It's probably 35%. Very exciting that we have Shattering Throwback. It still takes off immunities like Ice Block and Bubble, but it will also uh, break Absorbs. So I think this works on pre shields. It probably works. It might work on Ignore Pain on other warriors. I don't know if that's really a, an Absorb Shield. I'm not sure if that's that's what it looks like on your character. Um, but it, there's a boss at the end of the dungeon that we can play that has a little shield and I shattered it, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, it might have bugged the whole boss out by making us kill him too fast so that other mechanics weren't up yet and so we just died. But, you know, it was cool to be able to shatter a PvE boss too. It doesn't put, like, a 5% damage increase on him though, so there's that to consider. So I have Whirlwind. Now these things, um, Shield Block and Shield Slam. We have access to them. They do require a shield. At this point, if you put on a shield, you can't use any of your other abilities, I think, though. Like, everything, like, all of this other stuff, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really use it, but, um... Like, if you put on the shield, you can't over... You can't Mortal Strike anymore. You can't Overpower. But you can't Mortal Strike anymore when you have a shield out. So maybe, maybe when you have a shield out, you have Shield Slam or something. But one of the issues is, I feel like if that's the way this ability works, you just never use it, right? Where'd my, where'd my weapon go? Put that back on. Need a macro for that too, but um, I feel like if that's the way it works, you're just never gonna, you're never really gonna use that. Uh, you're never gonna use shield slam. What I think would be an awesome way to to, to work with this is if um, first of all, you can make a macro to to you know put shield slam on your bar and stuff. But shield block is very very powerful. You raise your shield blocking all melee attacks against you for six seconds. So like, you know kidney shots off cooldown. A rogue is running at you for kidney shot. Doesn't have shadow step. You just put shield block up, you can block his kidney, right? That'd be insane. You can block every attack for six seconds, and it's a 14 second recharge, has two charges. This is actually very, very powerful. So you, you might want to find a way to use this in defensive situations. The thing about shield slam is it's basically just sort of filling a, a, a gap in your rotation because you can't use mortal strike. What would be amazing is if shield slam sort of ha still had that, um, dispels one helpful buff from an enemy effect. That would be massive for arms war utility, right? Because you can knock buffs off of people by going into your uh, your sword and shield. That would just add, like, you don't really have stances anymore that you that you swap into a stance to use abilities, but that would, that would sort of maybe satisfy some of the stance dancing that people yearn for, right? You slap a mortal strike on somebody, you swap the sword and shield, Bow, knock off a you know a hot effect or knock knock off a buff, you know. Swap back to your your mortal strike weapon. I mean that'd be that'd be pretty cool. And also that would give you something to do when you have shield block up. But shield slam as it is right now is just kind of like an attack that you can use while you have shield block up instead, right? So something to think about. But I would love to see the added utility of dispelling a, a, an effect there. That'd be really cool for warriors to have that. Um, slam just slams people. So spell reflect is baseline now, but it's a little different than it currently is as an honor talent. You raise your weapon, reflecting all spells. Well, it says reflecting spells cast on you and reducing the magical damage you take by 20%. I don't think that it usually gives us the 20% mitigation. Maybe that's maybe that's for pro in BFA right now, but I've never seen that before. Um, but look at this. It lasts five seconds or until a spell is reflected, right? So it will potentially only take one spell unless you have the spell batching where a bunch of spells are cast on you within the time that it's checking to see if a spell is cast and your reflect is up, right? So that's kind of interesting how that works. I, I do wonder how that works with the honor talent. I feel like that might just be kind of like one of those things that's not fixed yet, that it's still an honor talent, but we'll see. And taunt and all that. So another thing that's, that's worth mentioning is you don't see it because I'm level, 50, uh, level 53, but at level 52, when you go into the arms thing, you actually get a perk that makes Die by the Sword have a one minute less cooldown. So Die by the Sword is now a two minute cooldown. How cool is that? I love that. 
That's that's one of those things with Warriors. We have all these super long cooldowns, but now Rally and Cry can have a one minute cooldown. Right? Die by the Sword can have a two minute cooldown. You have a short cooldown on Shield Block that recharges. You have a short cooldown on Ignore Pain that costs Rage. Like, you have a lot of defensive utility now. And you also have some utility to help your teammates too. Um, that I can walk you through here. So, Bladesword and Ravager, those are, you know, Bladesword's baseline, Ravager's talent. Sweeping Strikes actually benefits from leveling up too. At level 58, the duration is increased by 3 seconds, so it's going to be a 15 second Sweeping Strike, which is pretty cool. Uh, Warbreaker's a talent, you guys already know this stuff. Our Mastery is the same, we still generate more Rage auto-attacking, we still have a chance to reset Overpower, um, which we have Overpower and Mortal Strike. A Penny Victory is a talent, that'd be Stormbolt, something else, right? So not a lot's changed in the terms of the arms specific abilities, except for this, Piercing Howl. So I was concerned, I was like, so how's Piercing Howl gonna work? If Hamstring is still on global, it still costs rage, still only slows by 50%. Like, what do we, what's the deal with Piercing Howl if it still worked the way it did before? It's the same thing, except it's just AOE, so why would we press Hamstring? So Piercing Howl is actually a cooldown. A short cooldown, but a, 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 not a bad one. So it's a 30 second cooldown, and it slows all enemies within 12 yards by 70% for 8 seconds. So you can imagine, like, somebody's running at your healer, they need to get around the pillar, they're getting trained by 2 melee, you piercing how those 2 melee, your healer's able to scoot away because they're 70% slowed, right? 30 second cooldown, but still powerful. And then if you, I don't know if I'm going to use this, but you have your covenant ability, the spear, right? It's a 1 minute cooldown, and it generates rage, by the way, it's pretty cool. You chuck it on the ground, and enemies are tethered to it for 4 seconds, so you slow them, they get out of your slow, you tether them afterwards, so, Warriors actually have quite a bit of peel right now. But the combination of, of Intervene to your healer and Piercing Howl to slow people off, like, that's so cool, man. Like, this is what this is what Warrior needed. Like, we already do a lot of damage, which I hope we continue to do. Um, now we have some, mi some self-mitigation. We have a little bit shorter cooldowns on our defensive abilities. And now we're having the addition of some extra peel for our teammates, right? Even if it's just Piercing Howl. That probably could make a big difference. Um... And, the, the, and being able to intervene to our opponents is all, or to our allies is also awesome. So we have a lot of really cool stuff cooking for Arms Warrior right now. Talents haven't changed too much. Um, and some things are kind of like a little wonky. I'm not, not sure if it's supposed to work that way, like with Spell Reflect and with Ravager and Bladestorm. But uh, overall, things are looking really, really darn cool. And I'm very excited about the potential for Arms Warrior. Um, I do want to do a separate video for Fury. So what I'm going to do is we're going to shut down the video for right now for Arms. Uh, but definitely hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys are excited about Warriors like I am. Keep an eye out for the Fury video, you know, right after this one. And also keep an eye out for plenty more classes. We're going to be going over things like probably DK, Monk, w Rogue, whatever, Paladin, whatever else we feel like playing on the Alpha. That's what we're going to be doing. Because this is a, a fantastic time for us to just sort of get a just a beginner look at a lot of different classes. Because all we're doing is running to level 53 and getting to the end of the little mini storyline that we have right now and then check other classes so so far so good for arms warriors excited about fury 2 i'm gonna shut down this video and we're gonna get to work on the fury one so we can have both of them up for you guys fairly soon and keep cranking out other class you know overviews as the alpha goes on but either way you guys rock be sure to show the video some love stay tuned for more we'll see you soon peace